The book of Exodus tells of a time when the children of Israel were slaves in the land of Egypt. They weren't always slaves. In fact, Joseph, an Israelite, was the second most powerful man in all of Egypt. But because they failed to tell the Egyptians, their neighbors, about God, generations of Egyptians knew nothing of God and became cruel slave masters who made the Israelites serve under harsh bondage. It was then the children of Israel cried out to God, and he sent Moses to lead his people to freedom. However, when Moses confronted Pharaoh, demanding he let the Israelites go free to worship God, Pharaoh mocked and asked the question, Who is the Lord? Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? He arrogantly said. Because he did not know God, he felt no need to obey him. Because he didn't know God, he instead made the lives of the Israelites more difficult and increased the hardships that they had already faced. Because he didn't know God, he mocked the very thought of an all-knowing, all-powerful God. Who is the Lord? he asked. And God showed himself evident to Pharaoh and all of Egypt. God showed himself by turning the water to blood, the frogs that filled the land, the locusts that destroyed their crops. And plague after plague, Pharaoh hardened his heart. After nine plagues, God sent the final plague to Egypt, and the firstborn of every household died. Pharaoh mocked God at the beginning because he knew not God. After seeing the powerful hand of Almighty God, he yielded to God. Today, many may ask that same question. Who is the Lord? Who is the Lord that I should obey His voice? Because they don't know God, they arrogantly mock God. It's one thing to talk to Jesus. It's another thing when Jesus talks to you. Exactly. <laughs> That's called mental illness, if I'm not correct. But no, I'm, I'm hearing <laughs> voices. You know, Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. Because they don't know God, they refuse to obey His word. What any religious tradition ascribes as God's will is no concern of this Congress. Because they don't know God, wickedness is accepted and praised. What did you make of this kiss between Alicia and her wife? It's great that we're a part of something that's making steps forward in the, in the social inclusion capacity, but it's, it's frustrating that there are still places that, that aren't where they should be. You know, we're hoping for a time when we don't even have to have this conversation. We can watch a movie and we don't even have to bat an eyelid. We don't have to think, oh, wow, weird. You know, it's not weird, it's normal, and it should be normalized. My classroom is one of the gayest places probably on the planet. Everything is completely covered in rainbows. I've got flags everywhere. I've got queer literature. So I can create an explicitly queer space for all of my students. God will have to humble our nation, just as he humbled the land of Egypt. Will America face destruction and ruin, like Egypt? What if, instead of ruin and destruction, we had an army of young people, just like you, who instead said, I know the Lord. I will obey the Lord. I will tell others who the Lord is. If everyone in attendance tonight and those watching were to make it their goal to know the Lord and tell their friends, neighbors, and those around them who the Lord is, we could see this nation turn back to God. If you don't know the Lord, may you meet him and make him your personal savior this week. May we all this week endeavor to truly know the Lord.